What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a peek at the Sony 325ES 4K projector. Inside we get the standard Sony remote control, some documentation right there, and some batteries in the box as well for the remote. And this is the projector itself. If many of you guys have been following the channel for any period of time, this is actually the third Sony projector that I've had in my home theater. So there is a removable lens cap. What would have been nice if this, if there was a motorized lens cap here, but there's not. I don't think Sony's ever had that before. So on the front here, we have the air intake on the top. You got some LED lights, your warning light if it's overheating or anything. Auto standby power on. Of course, the Sony logo. If you wanted to, the lamp is behind here. So if you're gonna repair or replace the lamp, you would open up this door and the lamp would go there. Around back is the intake. I believe the front is the outtake. That's the rear IR sensor. And on the side is your IO, your ins and outs. So on the side here, we have your LAN input, two HDMI ins. They both support 18 gigabits per second. HDMI 2.0, HDCP 2.2. Got your trigger, got your IR input, your RS-232, and your USB input as well, so you can do uh, firmware updates. And on the opposite side, we have the power on off, input selector, menu button, selection pad, and the lens button. On the bottom, you have your mounting points for your mount right there three mounting points and some adjustable feet if you are going to lay this on like a bookshelf or something like that. So this is a native 4K projector. Resolution is 4096 by 2160. So it's not 3840 by 2160, it is native 4K. So true 4K, this will put out 1500 lumens of brightness. Lamp life is rated at 6,000 hours. It also supports 3D, so for the 3D fans out there, it does support 3D. It's IMAX enhanced. And another very important thing is that the lens is motorized. So you do get about 86% vertical shift and I believe 31% horizontal shift. So you got a big range of motion if you're going to use this and you're kind of slightly off center or of your screen. So this should be very simple to get it dialed into your screen. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this hooked up in the theater. I'm gonna be setting up the projector in my dedicated theater, projecting on a 120 inch 2391 Stuart Harmony G2 screen. It's an acoustically transparent screen with a gain of 0.7. I normally have an anamorphic lens attached to it since I've got a scope screen, but for this video, I won't be using the lens. I'll also be using a Panasonic UB9000 with the HDR optimizer turned off and a Cladiscape for demos. All right, let's jump into the settings and see what kind of options we get. First option is picture. We've got Cinema Film 1, Cinema Film 2, Reference, TV, Photo, Game, Bright Cinema, Bright TV, and a User. And here's the reset. Under Reality Creation, you've got On or Off. You can change the resolution, noise, filtering, or you can test what you've just changed on and off. Under Cinema Black Pro, we've got the Dynamic HDR Enhancer. We've got High, Middle, Low, or you can keep it off. For Lamp Control, we've got Low and High. On Motion Flow, we've got True Cinema, Smooth Low, and Smooth High. You can use this if you want to get the soap opera effect. We've got some sliders for contrast, brightness, color, hue, color temp with a few different options, and we've also got a sharpness slider. Now, if you are playing HDR content, it will say HDR right next to the contrast, but if it's SDR, it'll just say contrast. Under expert settings, we've got noise reduction. We've got auto, high, middle, low, and off. For noise reduction, we got the same options. For smooth gradation, there's low, middle, and high. Under color correction, you've got off or on. You can adjust the settings here for red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. 
but I'm going to keep this off since I don't have any calibration tools. Under clear white, you've got high, low, and off. Under HDR, we've got auto, HDR10, HDR reference, HLG, or you can keep it off. Under the auto setting, if you're playing HDR content, you can choose either the default as HDR10 slash HLG or HDR reference slash HLG. For me personally, I do prefer HDR10. Under color space settings, you can jump in here and make some adjustments for red, green, blue, and the last option is the input lag reduction. This is if you want to use this for some video gaming. Next section is screen. These are the settings you'd use if you're using an anamorphic lens. Now, if you are using an anamorphic lens, there are five zooming presets. There's 185 by 1, 235 by 1, normal, and the last one is vertical stretch. So if you're using a horizontal expansion lens like the Panamora 480, you can get an image like this where it will fill the entire scope screen. But for the rest of the video, I'm going to be using the projector without the lens in place. Now just for comparison, without the lens in place, this is the aspect ratio for normal. Here's vertical stretch, squeeze, 185 by 1, 235 by 1, and back to normal. And then we got blanking on or off, which you can adjust here for left, right, top, and bottom. The next section is the setup section. We've got status for on and off, language selection, which we've got a different options, menu position, we've got center or bottom left, altitude mode for either on or off, this will crank up the fan if you want to keep it cool if you're living in a higher altitude. There's network management if you're going to use this for IP control. For power settings, we've got standby or off. And if you replace the bulb, you can reset the timer here. And the last option is all reset. Next section, we've got dynamic range. We've got either auto, limited, or full. For HDMI signal format, we've got enhanced or standard format. Again, if you're going to use this with HDR content, you're going to want to keep this on enhanced. Next is the test pattern, either on or off. And then you've got settings for lock level A or level B. And this section is the installation section. For trigger, we've got off, power, vertical stretch, or 235 by 1. For IR receiver, you can choose either between front and rear or together. There's panel alignment and the network settings. And the last section is information. This will give you the model number of the projector, serial number, what resolution is playing, the color format, color space, HDR format, software version, and how many hours you have on the lamp. And that's it for settings. Right now we're going to look at a couple of different test patterns using the Spears and Munsell 4K disc. The first one we're going to take a look at is the contrast setting. So for this pattern there's a bunch of different boxes starting with the top row and the bottom row. They go from dark to light or from the opposite end, light to dark. And at the brightest point it goes from a 722 down to a 675. And on the top bar where it says 722, you're supposed to be able to adjust the contrast setting so you can see each individual box. So if we go into the settings over to the contrast slider, if we just max it out, we can see how we blow out the entire row and not see any boxes. If you go all the way down, I would say the best that I've seen it, at least from my screen, is at 48. If we jump into the dynamic HDR enhancer, right now we've got it off. We can see as we go to low, medium, and then high, that it affects the overall brightness. It's very subtle, but then you do start losing the boxes all the way at the end. So the highlights do get clipped the higher you go up. Alright, the next one we're going to check out is brightness. Alright, for this pattern you should see some boxes on the top, middle, and on the bottom. It's a gray scale that goes from a lighter gray all the way down to a darker black. And by default, the brightness setting is set to 50. Let's say we go all the way down to minimum, we can totally obliterate and crush the boxes all together. But if we slowly go up past 50, 
right when we hit 55, you should be able to see the checkerboard pattern in the background. And then also the two boxes on the right, which is a 4% and a 2% window. As we go up, the blacks totally get washed out and muddy. And once we hit 59, then you can start seeing the checkerboard pattern again. If we go up one more click, everything disappears. If we go up one more click, they start to come back again, but the black level here is are so gray, it looks horrible. And the higher we go up, of course, the grayer everything gets. So for this pattern and my screen, this looks best on 55. Now if we go to Dynamic HDR Enhancer, I set that up with the HDR Enhancer off, but if we go to Low, then we start losing detail in the background. Middle, we start losing a little bit there in the center. And then on high, we lose a little bit more detail in the center as well. So for the brightness, it looks like you might have to adjust it on a movie by movie basis or content by content basis, or it could just react differently to different screens. Next, we're gonna play this 1000 nit HDR demo. Now this scene, there's a lot of detail in the snow, so you should be able to see like hoof prints and also in the background, there's some trees and some mountains back there. With the settings that I just made, I've got this on HDR Enhancer Low. If I were to turn this off, the overall image brightness does get brighter. The whites are brighter, the snow's brighter, but the horses, which are black or very dark brown, have now lightened up once I turned off the HDR Enhancer. If I set it back to low, you can see the overall brightness of the image it takes a little hit in brightness, but the black levels do get a little bit darker. So the horses are a little bit darker and also the trees in the background, a little bit darker as are the shadows in the snow. As I go up, the overall picture brightness gets brighter once again, but the dark areas tend to be a little bit more raised. And once I go to high, the darker areas again get raised up a little bit more, but the overall brightness of the picture does get brighter, which makes the whites pop more. If we were to change the HDR slider, you can obviously make everything a lot brighter and then if we go all the way down the opposite end, we can really enhance the black levels and bring out even more shadow detail. But then you're kind of sacrificing the bright highlights. So it's one of those things where you have to find a nice common ground. And again, this is with content mastered at 1000 nits. Let's check out the same scene mastered at 4000 nits. So this is the same scene mastered at 4000 nits and automatically you could tell, leaving at the settings that we just had, that there's obviously less detail in the background, there's less detail in the snow. So it's harder to see those footprints and shadows in the snow. But if we were to go back into these settings, put this off, overall picture does get brighter once again. And as we move up the slider, the overall picture brightness overall does get a little bit brighter, but then we start losing a bit more shadow detail. So we are gonna have to go into the HDR slider and manually adjust it here. And again, the lower you go, the more detail you can recover, but then you're kind of losing that extra pop. So again, it's one of those things, depending on what you're watching, you might have to change it on a title by title basis, movie by movie basis. So it's not like a one setting fits all for all content. Just to check out HDR 10 or HDR reference once again, this is a scene from Sully. So if you keep your eye on the fireball, there should be some different shades and gradations of oranges and whites and reds. Once we switch it over to HDR10, the highlights get clipped and everything looks all blown out. So for me, for action movies, I do prefer to keep it on HDR10. Now this is a scene from Blade Runner 2049. It's a really dark scene which shows how well the black levels work on this projector. I found that the black levels were nearly as good as the JVCs. It is slightly raised over the JVC since there is no dynamic iris, but Overall, this is a fantastic image, and you can still see detail on the lower left corner with the books and the accessories and paraphernalia on the desk, and even the piano in the center of the screen there is also visible. On some DLP projectors, I've seen a lot of that detail just get lost in the darkness. And this is one more scene from Blade Runner 2049. I remember when I had the Sony 675ES, which was something like 15 grand back in the day. In the background, you used to be able to see color banding as the orange skyline shifts from a light down to a, a darker orange. Here for the 325ES, there are smooth gradations all the way through, so there's no issues with gradations and everything is very smooth. 
At the time of this video, the Sony 325ES sells for $5,500. That might seem like a lot when you can get 4K DLP projectors that are almost double the brightness at half the cost, but the Sony is the most affordable native 4K projector that doesn't rely on upscaling to achieve its 4K resolution. It also has far superior black levels and isn't affected by the dreaded DLP rainbow effect. Having native 4K resolution also gives you better rendering of finer detail and an overall cleaner and what I think is a more film-like experience over the more digital DLP look. When I had compared it to the JVC NX7, which is a few thousand dollars more, the first thing that really stood out to me was the brightness. The JVC was rated at 1900 lumens while the Sony is 1500, and I did notice the hit in brightness for HDR material. That's not to say it looks bad, but if you have a larger screen larger than the 120 inch that I own, the Sony may struggle to light it up with enough bright visual impact to make 4K stand out. That being said, for my screen, I thought HDR material looked great, although I did find myself adjusting the dynamic HDR setting from time to time. Specular highlights had very nice pop, and black levels and shadow detail were nearly as good as what I had on the JVC. The JVC does have a dynamic iris, while the Sony does not. So advantage, JVC. One little annoyance that popped up occasionally was that the focus would drift and become slightly out of focus from time to time. In the few months that I've been using it, I maybe had to refocus it on three or four occasions. I should also mention that the Sony also handles 3D content. At 100 inches, I found the brightness good enough to make the image stand out with impressive depth and separation. This of course is movie dependent since some look better than others. I also didn't notice any crosstalk unless it was in the source. You also don't need an adapter to make the 3D work like the JVCs, so I was able to get my Expand 3D glasses working in only a few seconds. Focus uniformity was equal across the entire screen, so all four corners were the same as well as the center. Gaming was perfectly fine for my casual gaming, but I could feel a little sluggishness between the controller and what was happening on screen. If you're really into gaming, you might want to get something else. As for fan noise, while in low mode, it's barely noticeable from 8 feet away in a quiet room. You won't hear it with content playing, but on high, it becomes noticeable during the quieter parts of a movie, so unless you're projecting at a far distance or have the projector in another room, keeping it on low will be the most unobtrusive. Overall, this is a fantastic dedicated home theater projector for a light-controlled room. It's definitely better than any DLP projectors that I've had in, including ultra short throws. If you want a solid performing real 4K projector without getting into the crazy five digit prices, the Sony 325ES needs to be on your shortlist. Now, if you do want to grab anything that I've mentioned in this video, you can visit valueelectronics.com or stop by the store. Just let them know that we sent you. Keep in mind that I'm not a professional projector reviewer or calibrator, so your experience with the Sony could very well be different than mine. Well, those are my thoughts on the Sony 325ES 4K projector. Hope you found this video useful. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video.